Eric Erickson was a prominent psychologist in the 1950s who theorized that personality is developed through eight different stages. And this theory was later conceptualized and named Eric Erickson's Eight Stages of Psychosocial Development. Similar to how Sigmund Freud hypothesized that an individual goes through certain stages in his psychosexual theory of development, Erickson believed that personality is also developed in a series of stages. But unlike Freud's psychosexual stages, Erickson's theory described the impact of social experience across the entire lifespan, while Freud stopped once an individual had reached adulthood. Erickson was also interested in how social interaction and relationships played a role in the growth and development of human beings, which is why it's called the psychosocial theory of development. Yeah. Each stage in Erickson's theory builds on the preceding stages and paves the way for the following periods of development. In each stage, Erickson believed that people experience a conflict, which serves as a turning point in development. If an individual is able to successfully deal with the conflict, they emerge from that stage with a psychological strength that will serve them for the rest of their lives. If they fail to deal effectively with these conflicts, they may not develop the essential skills needed for a strong sense of self and will most likely suffer some type of problems because of it. So the first stage is called trust versus mistrust. And this is from birth to 12 months. Essentially, it boils down to the fact that infants must learn that adults can be trusted. And this occurs when adults meet a child's basic need for survival. Infants are dependent upon their caregivers. So caregivers who are responsive and sensitive to their infant's needs help their baby to develop a sense of trust. Their baby will see the world as a safe and predictable place. If infants are treated cruelly or their needs are not met appropriately, they will likely to grow up with a sense of mistrust for people in the world. The second stage is called autonomy versus shame and doubt. And this second stage, according to the theory, occurs during early childhood when the child starts to gain some responsibility. For example, a two-year-old child might want to observe a sense of autonomy and choose her clothes and dress herself. Although her outfits might not be appropriate for the situation, her input in such basic decisions has an effect on her sense of independence. If denied the opportunity to act on her environment, she may begin to doubt her abilities, which could lead to a low self-esteem and feelings of shame. The third stage is initiative versus guilt and children enter stage three generally around the time that they start preschool and this is around the first time that a child is leaving the structure of their home they are allowed to socialize and explore by interacting with their peers the belief behind this stage is that successful children can approach and befriend others while those who fail may develop a lack of initiative and guilt the fourth stage is industry versus inferiority and this occurs mainly during elementary school, so around ages 6 to 12. Industry here refers to the idea of gaining skills and competencies that are valued in the child's culture. For example, if you're in first grade, the skills may have to do with whether you can count and read. And if you can't do the things that you're expected to do, or you're feeling like you aren't meeting certain expectations, that may lead to a sense of inferiority. If children do not get along with others or have negative experiences at home or with peers, an inferiority complex might develop into adolescence and further on into adulthood. The previous stages outcomes do carry some weight here. Remember that I said that each stage influences the subsequent stages and sort of builds up. For instance, a child who has developed a sense of autonomy in stage two may feel confident about making friends and trying new things at school. If they try a task and they fail, they'll try again. But a child who is coming into the stage with both shame and doubt might struggle to do things on their own. They may wander aimlessly in the classroom or avoid playing with others. That in turn might foster the sense of inferiority later down the line. 
The fifth stage is called identity versus confusion. Now this crisis of identity versus confusion takes place during the teen years. This stage encompasses one's ethnic background, their sexual preference, and what they may want to do in the future. According to Ericsson, an adolescent's main task is developing a sense of self. Adolescents struggle with questions such as who am I? What do I want to do with my life? Along the way, most adolescents try on different selves to see which one fits best. They explore various roles and ideas, set goals, and attempt to discover their adult selves. Adolescents who are successful at this stage have a strong sense of identity and are able to remain true to their beliefs and values in the face of problems, and as well as other people's perspectives. When adolescents are apathetic, they do not make a conscious search for an identity or are pressured to conform to either their parents' ideas of the future or perhaps social expectations as well. They may also develop a weak sense of self and experience role confusion. They will be unsure of their identity and confused about the future and teenagers who struggle to adopt a positive role will be unlikely to find themselves when they're adults. The sixth stage is called intimacy versus isolation, and it takes place during young adulthood, defined as 20s through to 40s, so a pretty hefty amount of time. And uh, it's centered around the idea that having a better sense of identity makes it easier to figure out what they're looking for in other relationships. So if an individual struggles to find their identity, they will most likely struggle to find intimacy. For instance, Ericsson said that we must have a strong sense of self before we can develop successful intimate relationships. And success in stage six leads to a strong relationship building skill set. While experts suggest that people without a strong sense of self may feel confusion over their identity and will struggle forming bonds with others and they are more likely to be lonely and isolated. The seventh stage is generativity versus stagnation. During this stage, middle-aged adults begin contributing to the next generation. They also engage in meaningful and productive work, which contributes positively to society. Those who do not master this task, the task of generativity, may feel stagnation and feel as though they are not leaving a mark on the world in a meaningful way. They may have little connection with others and little interest in productivity and self-improvement. The final stage of Eric Erikson's psychosocial development theory, which is stage 8, is integrity versus despair. And this final stage occurs in old age. This is the point where people look back on their life and decide if they're happy with what they've contributed to in the world or regret the things they left unsaid or regret not having done something. In a nutshell, Erikson said that people in late adulthood reflect on their lives and feel either a sense of satisfaction or a sense of failure. People who feel proud of their accomplishments feel a sense of integrity and they can look back on their lives with few regrets. However, people who are not successful at this stage may feel as if their life has been wasted. They focus on what would have been, what should have been and could have been. They face the end of their lives with feelings of bitterness, depression and despair. But fortunately for them, that is the final stage. And they won't have to have these feelings for too much longer. And that's the end of this video. I hope you found it interesting. And if you do, drop a like and comment and even subscribe to the channel. And I'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching.